Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Riley Pickrell. I get to serve the campus ministry here and the honor of preaching this morning. Um, and I would like to share a little bit about the campus ministry. Uh, this weekend, we all went to the beach together uh, in Jersey. And I don't know if you've ever been to a Jersey beach. I had low expectations. No offense to anyone that's from Jersey, but I, I know the Jersey Shore. So going, I was, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, <laughs> non-existent. <laughs> Good reviews. <laughs> for me. Lake Erie, yeah, there's a beach in Ohio. But I got some pictures back here of, of us at the beach. You got Kelly in a hole that we dug. You got Rodrigo with a sandwich. It was pretty fun. Rodrigo's only goal at the beach was to bring a shovel with us to dig a really big hole. Um, so we did that. And then some of the lifeguards came by and they're like, you, know, you can't dig a hole here. You got to fill it in. And we said, we just want to take a picture. So we took a picture and filled it in. But So it was fun. Um, I think there's one more picture after that. Yeah, there's all the group with the shovel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a key component of the day. <laughs> but. Uh, but going into the lesson this morning, if you guys want to be turning over to Nehemiah chapter 5 is where we're going to be reading out of. Um, and before we jump in, uh, I want to start off with a question. Um, have you in here uh, ever wanted to change something? Uh, doesn't matter what it is, but wanted to see something different. Of course you have. I think everybody at one point wanted to change something. Whether it's, it's ourselves, um, to become more mature, to grow. Uh, it's a situation maybe, maybe a group. Maybe to be a better follower of Jesus, uh, to learn how to follow him uh, more accurately, more like him. Uh, possibly to be a better, uh, have a better sense of humor if you have an immature one like me. I'm developing, I'm trying to do that. Or to be a better plant dad. Um, also working on that, I have thirsty plants most of the time. Uh, but we've all wanted to change. This is, this is something I, I think that's very, you, you even see it in movies. Uh, they want to go out and, and change the world and, uh, and make a difference wherever they are. Uh, it's funny, I was actually trying to figure out where to start with this lesson, so I asked JC, my roommate back home, uh, when you think of like a movie or like a book or something like that where someone like wants to change the world like what's the first thing that comes up what's a quote um, and he's like he thinks a second he goes I am inevitable um, and if you don't know what that is a quote from it's uh, it's a quote from the villain of uh, I think I also have a picture of him the purple guy uh, the villain from the Avengers and game and Infinity Wars uh, he did want to change the world but not in a good way he uh, wanted to annihilate half the universe but uh, that was the first thing that came to JC's mind uh, but anyway we we all want change and, and as we're going into the this lesson today uh, we're gonna see in the book of Nehemiah we get to see a glimpse of Nehemiah where he's in a place where he's given power. He becomes governor over Jerusalem. We kind of get uh, to peer into to how he actually takes on this mantle, um, how he changes the culture and, and the situation that was happening in Israel. Bryce spoke on this last week um, that in the beginning of chapter 5, you, you kind of get a glimpse of, of what's happening in Israel. There's, there's leaders and and they're not being very good leaders. They are, they're stealing from the people. Um, they're making uh, people uh, sell their, their vineyards and their fields in order to pay them, or, or even sending their kids into slavery. Uh, not a good situation. Uh, it's, it's something that definitely needed to change. And, and I think Bryce did a good ex job explaining that the point of this passage and the story, it's not necessarily about money. Um, but it's about something deeper. It happens to be about, about money and, and, um, and these things that they're stealing from them. Uh, but these things are they're a symptom of, of a deeper heart issue. That Nehemiah coming in, he's, he is rebuilding the physical Jerusalem, but he also is there to restore the hearts of the people. Um, from the beginning, uh, Abraham was called from, uh, by God that he's one day going to be a blessing to all the nations. Uh, I think a guy like Nehemiah would have understood this. He would understand that it's not about a physical place or, or Jerusalem wasn't just a, uh, a city, uh, but the people was actually one day going to play a role much larger than that. And, and before that could actually happen, there needed to be a heart change in the people. So let's start reading. We're going to go to verse 14 in chapter 5. And it says, Moreover, from the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when I was appointed to be the governor in the land of Judah, until his 32nd year, 12 years, neither I nor my brothers ate the food allotted to the governors. But the early governors, the earlier governors, those preceding me, placed a heavy burden on the people and took 40 shekels of silver in addition to the food and wine. Their assistants also lorded it over the people. 
But out of reverence for God, I did not act like that. Instead, I devoted myself to the work on the wall. All the men were assembled there for the work. We did not acquire any land. So, pausing there, what, what we see in Nehemiah, what he's doing here, is that he's not just coming in and, and doing the same thing that the leaders before him were doing. Um, that, that was the normal culture. Actually, the leaders that would have been in Jerusalem, um, they would have been Jewish, they would have been part of the people. Uh, but also many of them, if you remember when Israel was cake, taken into captivity, uh, most of the leaders and nobles and people of higher standing uh, wouldn't have actually been uh, with the majority of people, but actually taken to learn Babylonian ways, to be taught in the culture and, and to be educated. So most of these leaders would have come back uh, knowing the ways of Babylon and, and they were going to treat the people in accordance to that. They were going to, to give out loans with interest. Uh, they were going to seize land and make slaves if it was going to be monetarily uh, good for them in that. Uh, but we see Nehemiah coming in and does, he does the opposite. He does not do these things. He chooses to do something different. But he doesn't stop there. He actually, as we keep reading, let's go to verse 17. It says, Furthermore, 150 Jews and officials ate at my table as well as those who came to us from surrounding nations. Each day, one ox, six choice sheep, and some poultry were prepared for me, and every ten days an abundant supply of wine of all kinds. In spite of this, I never demanded the food allotted to the governor, because the demands were heavy on the people. Oh. I think it went out. Remember me, there I am. Remember me with favor, uh, my God, for all I have done for the people. Uh, so Nehemiah does not just stop with behavior modification and, and not doing what the Babylonians did. Instead, he took it a step further. How? Through sacrifice. He chose to live sacrificially to the people, not just not to do the bad things, but to actually live a proactive life of actively sacrificing. And what we, I think, can draw from this is, is real change, change that moves individuals, families, cultures, begins when those choose, or those there, choose to sacrifice, to go the extra measure. Um, the difference that we see here, I, I think, it must have been probably huge. So Nehemiah wasn't just, you know, not taking from the people. Uh, but choosing to, to be devoted to the wall. There was no work or task that was too low for Nehemiah. He chose to give. He worked on the wall, as you read in verse 16, with all the people um, and the men that were with him. Um, and then every day he's personally feeding 150 people. Uh, and these would have been people coming in from different nations. As a governor, he would have had to, to host them and, and, and kind of show them on their way. Um, but also, it's a large group of people. It wasn't just uh, for diplomatic reasons, but you just, the need was there. So Nehemiah met the need. And, uh, and that's a huge amount. Of, if you do the numbers, multiply uh, one ox, you know, times 365, times 12 years, that's a lot of food. That is, that's a ton of giving that came personally out of Nehemiah's own, own wealth. That he chose to be sacrificial in that. And what I actually find very interesting about all this is that the biggest impact wasn't just what Nehemiah was able to do, but what his assistants and the men who were with him saw and actually changed. As you, as you read in verse 16, you see in the halfway through it says, All my men were assembled there with me at the wall for the work. We did not acquire any land. Like the big difference you see is not just Nehemiah changing, but the men who were around him and with him uh, are actually also choosing not to acquire land. Um, and I don't think it'd be a stretch of the imagination to think that these men were also seeing him give at his table where he was feeding 150 people and out of their own wealth maybe would have opened up their table wherever they were able to. Um, and imagine the difference in, in the nations. You got one before with the old governors who Really, the governor and his associates were all, at any chance, trying to get wealthier and stealing. So now there's a culture of people who, from top to bottom, went out for giving or feeding. Uh, we're trying to make a difference. And uh, it would have been very different times with that. And the difference is, is stark. Um, but the big thing is, is he chose not just to not be like the Babylonians, to not do the bad thing, but Nehemiah here, chooses to be like God. That's what sacrifice it really is. And when you choose to be like God in a situation, 
Uh, and without an expectation, another great way to say it is, it's an exercise of integrity without expecting anything. Mm -hmm. Choosing to be like God somewhere with just the hopes that God is going to show up and, and he's going to change the situation. It's, it really is an act of faith. And uh, real sacrifice is an exercise of, of one's integrity without expectations. And another great way to say it is, leaders or difference makers always choose to eat last. It's the title of today's lesson is Difference Makers Eat Last. Um, someone I thought of while I was writing out this lesson um, and thinking through that immediately popped in my head was Danielle Cameron. Um, if you don't know Danielle, she, is, she leads our, our children's ministry here. And um, Also, side note, if, if you are able to serve in kids' ministry, um, to get capacity to, to get your clearances and do that. And we've talked about this a lot in many months. The need is great. Uh, we need people there very bad. If, if you haven't gone and done that, I will ask that there needs to be a, a heart check there as to the why behind that. But I'm not going to talk about that. That's, you know, that's a whole different issue. Um, what, what I want to talk about is uh, Danielle um, is also someone, if you know her, that does not like camping. She's not a camper. She doesn't like the outdoors. Camping is not an activity she would go out and choose to do uh, unless she was made to. Um, but uh, last year, she chose to go and serve at something our church does every summer. We own a camp called The Forge. Uh, and she chose to serve at a camp that was for preteens. Um, and what that meant is that she would spend the whole week serving preteens, uh, helping them get out of bed, get to all the places around camp where they needed to be, all those kind of things. Um, and what that also required of her is that she was going to live outdoors almost for a week. We have cabins there, um, but the cabins are uh, where a tent is over here and like a, a cabin cabin's here. It's somewhere in between. It's not like quite a real cabin. Um, so she's still basically outdoors. Um, but she chose to do that. Uh, she chose to give, and she also works with children as a career. Um, and so her vacation um, was to go out and then serve more children outside. Um, there's even a night at camp called Sleeping Under the Stars, where you're not even in the, the cabin tent thing. You're actually under the stars. Um, so she chose to sleep on the ground with the insects, with the sounds of the night, and all the things I'm pretty sure Danielle does not like. Um, <laughs> all because she wanted to serve these preteens. Um, and the cool thing about really all that is, is these preteens, it means a lot more to them than one would actually realize. Um, Danielle's going to be going back to camp this year. We've been talking about it. I think she's excited. I really don't know. Uh, we're going to see. But without a doubt, she's going to get to camp, and there's going to be kids that run up to her and say, Danielle, I can guarantee this. Am I in your cabin? Uh, are we, am I going to be with you this year? The impact that she's having there, it's, it's incredible. The kids are going to look forward to that coming. Um, and I don't think it's also a stretch of the imagination that these kids are going to grow up. They're going to think of the positive experiences they, they experienced there uh, with Miss Danielle, waking up and shaking them up in the morning and, and getting them where they needed to be. And they'll probably themselves want to go and serve into that capacity. Um, all because Somebody chose a sacrifice, and they're going to grow up with a crystal clear example of what that looks like, but also the impact that it really does have. Um, she's a great example. Um, let's see here. Yes. Uh, but difference makers, they will always choose to eat last. Um, they're always going to be the first to sacrifice image, reputation, uh, to let people, you know, maybe know what's really going on in their life through vulnerability, that's sacrifice. You're sacrificing an image of yourself um, so that you can see spiritual growth the way God intends it, through God's methods. Uh, in fact, they're also going to opt for God's methods in every area of their life. They're going to handle schoolwork the way God, with honesty and integrity. Or they're going to balance their time so they can have real connections with the people of God, so they can build real relationships. I love uh, a quote my, the, my old campus minister. When, so I was never in college someone who was a social person. I grew up on a farm. I'm happy just being outside by myself. I don't need people most of the time. Uh, but one of the things the old campus minister told me, and he would also tell his five-year-old children that if you want to be a friend, you have, or if you want to make a friend, you have to be a friend. You have to choose to go and give intentionally. Um, 
difference makers are going to go out of their way and build real connections with people and give time. Um, parents, in the way that they guide their family, they're going to do it in, with God's methods, with great patience. Uh, choosing the way he did it. They're going to sacrifice what's easier, uh, what seems right at the moment, and choose that God is going to work out in time what's going to happen if they choose to act the way he does in that. Uh, so the question will be, where will you choose to sacrifice? Where will you choose to act without expectation, with the faith that God's going to do something really cool? Um, I will say in the story of Nehemiah, I think it can be uh, kind of, it, I don't have an ox or a lot to give people. I, I, that seems like a big expectation. Um, but the cool thing about Nehemiah is that all the things that he sacrificed to feed the people did not happen in one day. Um, like sacrifice is not one grandiose example of something crazy that we did for somebody. Rather, it's, it's a daily effort to do these things. He did these things every day for 12 years. That's why the impact was so huge. Um, it's a daily effort to choose. So, I, I have a few questions. Do you have the faith to trust God's methods for change that through sacrifice, making a real difference? It's, uh, do you trust that God's going to work that out? Um, also, are you willing to trust God's timing? Nehemiah did this for 12 years. Uh, he, he gave and, and he fed people. And, and all the while, I'm sure it, nothing changed immediately. But year after year, through each sacrifice, people developed. His leaders changed, I'm sure, top to bottom. God's people um, really did feel a difference there. Do you trust God's timing? That continuing in his methods, he is in time going to work out what you do seek. Uh, here's some questions to think about. And, but the sacrifice is, is daily decisions of acting without expectations, trusting God's going to work. So, church, um, there is no lack of sacrifice or areas to sacrifice in. Um, whether it's kids' ministry, it's our camp, or even just uh, lifting up a person that you know needs it. Uh, the table's set. The world's full of it. Uh, so this week, let's go out uh, and let's choose to let God change and eat last. Uh, so that's all I have. Um, I'm going to invite, actually, Dan to come back up, and he has a quick announcement.